Hi my scholars, you are welcome back to my school channel and my name is Abiola. Do not forget in this channel we are solving the jam CBT past question for the subject physics the year 2014. Remember, don't go anywhere, stay with us and we'll be right back. channel and in this video segment we are solving questions 29 to 41 so let's start with question 29 what charge is stored in a 0.1 farad capacitor when a 10 volt supply is connected across it so we're just going to use the formula q equals cv all right q you are talking about quantity of electric charge equals c okay which is 0 0.1 times voltage supply which is 10 so 0 0.1 times 10 that is 1 column of charge supplied. So let's go back to the screen and see if we can find this value in any of the options provided. So look through the options provided, you will find that value in option A. So option A is the correct option. Question 30. The maximum power transfer will occur in a cell when the external resistance is what? Okay. So when you talk about a cell, you know, the internal resistance is the opposition to the free flow of current. So that means the more the internal resistance of a cell, the greater the opposition to the flow of current or to the supply of current. So that means for a cell to supply current at its maximum capacity or the maximum power transfer or coin a cell, when that internal resistance is lower when you compare it to the external resistance. Okay. So the correct option here will be option C that um, the maximum power transfer or coin a cell when the external resistance is greater than the internal resistance of the cell. So you know that when the internal resistance of the cell is lower compared to what is supplying outside. So definitely it is the internal resistance of the cell that determines the power transfer. So if the internal resistance is lower or it is low, of course, there is more supply of current. So the correct option is option C. 31. A circuit has a resistance of 200 ohms. Okay, the resistance of the circuit can be reduced to 120 ohms when we do what? Okay, that is when we had 300 ohms resistor, resistor to it. Okay, in parallel. So let's try this out. So let's add up 300 ohms resistor to the 200. Let's say it's going to get reduced to 120. So remember, in parallel, it is 1 over this equals 1 over the first one, which is 200. You know, we are adding 300 to it, right? LCM here is 600, isn't it? 200 and 600, that is 3. Times 1, that is 3. Plus 300 in this, that is 2. 2 times 1, we have 2. So 3 plus 2, we have 5. Definitely, we have 1 over R equals 5 over 600, right? We can cross multiply. So we'd have 600 times 1 equals R times 5. Dividing both sides by 5. So we can see that it is being reduced to 120 ohms. All right. So we have 120 ohms. So it is can be reduced to 120 ohms when we add up 300, okay, in parallel. So the correct option is what we are about to find out. So let's go back to the screen to sort out the correct option. So we can confirm that option A is correct. All right. This a circuit as a resistance of this can be reduced to 120 when we had 300 ohms resistor in what parallel connected to it. So option A is your correct option. Question 32. PHCN measures its electrical energy in what? In kilowatts. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So you're talking about um, a particular appliance, okay? And when it uses a power of um, one kilowatt, just in an hour. So PHCN, formerly known as NEPA, measures its electrical energy in what? In option B, kilowatt hours. Option B is your correct option. Number 33. What is the best method of demagnetizing a steel bar magnet? Okay, so when you talk about demagnetizing a steel a magnet, okay, you are trying to you are actually making the magnet lose its magnetism. 
All right. So um, we have three methods, at least I'm going to mention here. We have the mechanical method, which is represented by Hamry. We have the eating method. We have the electrical method, okay, which involves the use of um, solenoid. All right. So this is the most efficient way of demagnetizing a magnet. So the correct option here is option D for the solenoid method or electrical method. Question 34. The, magnetic, the magnitude rather of the angle of dip at the equator is what? It is zero degrees. You know, when you talk about the magnetic element, all right, so angle of dip is one of it. So at the magnetic equator, it is zero degrees. It varies all over the Earth's surface, okay? From zero degrees at the magnetic equator to 90 degrees at the magnetic pole. So we are talking about the angle of dip at the magnetic equator. So it is definitely zero degrees. So your correct option is option B for zero degrees. Do not forget to use that link in the description below, okay? If once you click it, you are going to travel straight down to the MySchool website. Right there, you can get the MySchool mobile app or the MySchool software. So, what's stopping you? Join me as we solve question 35. When an atom undergoes a beta decay, the atomic number of the nucleus does what? Okay, so when you talk about beta decay, you're talking about an electron. Remember, mass is zero, the charge minus one. So when it undergoes when an atom undergoes beta decay the atomic number increases by unit one okay increases by one the atomic mass remains unchanged unaltered so the correct option here is option c increases by one do not forget to always hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video clips just for you number 36 calculate the mass of the copper deposited doing electrolysis when a current of 4 ampere passes through a copper salt for two hours okay uh, remember that we're going to be using the faraday first law of electrolysis right so where we have m is directly proportional to q okay so that implies m equals to e i c e is a constant which sometimes is being um, represented with z okay so Whichever way, we're going to have EIT or ZIT, whatever thing. So let's just walk around this. So we are asked to find the mass, okay, that will be deposited. So we just know that E has a value for copper. It is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the power minus 7. All right. We are told um, the current that passes through it is 4 amperes. Alright, times the time, okay? Remember, we said two hours. So that will be two times, and how I've been converted to seconds is 60 times 60. That is 3,600. Okay, so two times this should give us 7,200. Okay, so let's just do some basic um, calculation. That's 3.3 times four times this that is eight okay so you all can say two times this that is seven point seven thousand two hundred rather times four right then times ten raised to power minus seven okay so i can still um, work around this all right so let's just do the direct multiplication of all of this all right so then we'll just arrive at our final answer to save us um air time so when we multiply, we should have 9.5 times 10 raised to power minus 3. Okay, when we multiply all of this, then you know standard form. Okay. So let's just go back to the screen to select the correct option. 9.3, 9.5 times 10 raised to power minus 3, rather. So if we look through the options provided, you will find that in option C. Remember it is mass kilogram is not out of place okay so the correct option once again is option c 9.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 kilogram question 37 which gas produces a red colored light in a discharge tube okay so the the most used gas here is the neon gas all right and it gives um a bright orange red um, coloration to put here so the correct option here to this question is option d for neon Question 38. Which of the following is not a fundamental SI unit? Okay, you know, fundamental quantities, you know, they are the basic quantity upon which not all, though not all, but upon which all other um, quantities depend on. So, so um, 
in reference to their unit as well. Okay, so a fundamental quantities they are fundamental units. So this is the unit for length is meter, unit for electric current is ampere, unit for force that's a derived quantity, mass tends acceleration that is Newton, unit for time okay that is second. So this is a derived quantity that is force. So the correct option here is option C for Newton. Remember that you can ask those questions right now. So what do you need to do? Use that link in the description below. Once you click it, it's going to move you to the My School website. There you can ask your questions and our solution providers are willing and ready to help you out. So ask those questions. So join me as we solve question 39. When um, this is atomic mass is atomic number for lead, the case to this, okay, it emits what? So when you take note of this, observe, observe this very well, we have a difference of 4 and we have a difference of 2. So that is 4 and 2. That tells you what an alpha particle. We're talking about helium to be precise. Four atomic mass, atomic number two, hydrogen helium. Remember? Okay, so the correct option is option B, an alpha particle. It is very possible that you have better steps, explanations, or contributions you'd like to share, and we are so much interested. All you need to do is to use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations you'd like to recommend. Question 40. What type of reaction is represented by the equation? Okay, we have deuterium, deuterium, then we have this. All right, you can see two small nuclei coming together to form a bigger nucleus. Okay, so it tells you about nuclear fusion. Fusion. Okay, then when you talk about fission, you are breaking a heavy nucleus into two smaller nuclei. So this is the equation for nuclear fusion. All right, when you talk about fission, you're talking probably like uranium. All right, that heavy um, nucleus. So the correct option is option B for nuclear fusion. Question 41. A glass bottle of initial volume 2 times 10 raised to the power 4, okay, centimeter cube is heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. If the linear expansivity of the glass is 9 times 10 raised to the power minus 6, okay, the volume of the bottle at 50 degrees Celsius is what? So we can tell that uh, the temperature change is 30 degrees Celsius, of course, and we can see the linear expansivity is um, 9 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. So remember that cubic expansivity is 3 times the um, linear expansivity. So cubic expansivity, let me just do this, equals 3 times linear expansivity from here is given as 9 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. Isn't it? Okay, so remember cubic expansivity, that is 3 times, sorry, that's 27 now. 27 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 equals Increase in volume, right? That is V2 minus V1. What is our V1? We are giving our V1 as 2 times 10 raised to the power 4 over the initial length, which is still V1, 2 times 10 raised to the power 4 times 30 change in temperature. Okay, so when we cross multiply, we have something like this 27 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 times 2 times 10 raised to the power 4 times 30 equal. Then remember this when it moves here, it becomes plus. Plus all of this plus 2 times 10 raised to the power 4 gives us the final volume we are looking for. So let's multiply 27 times this. Okay, 27 times 3 is 81. So we have a 0, that is 810. 810 times 2, that is 1620. Alright, we have 10 raised to the power minus 6 times 10 raised to the power 4. Minus 6 plus 4, that is minus 2. Right? Then we have plus 2 times 10 raised to the power 4. Okay, this is very, very easy. So remember this 10 raised to the power minus 2. If that means 1 over 100, so that is 1620 one, divided by 100. This is what I mean. Look at this. 1620 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 means 1 over 10 raised to the power 2, which means 1 over 100. So this is times 1 over 100, isn't it? So 0 strikes 0. I have 162 over 10, that is 16.2. Okay, very easy, 16.2. So that is what we should have. Or I can decide to still leave it this way and walk around here. Whichever one I want to use is fine, 
okay so we have um, 16.2 so when we have 16.2 to this you remember this is 20,000 that is two times um, four zeros okay we are having two, four zeros here so this implies two right one two three four you can see 10 raised to the power four one two three four then we are adding it to this okay remember when we multiply this we got 16.2 so this is this is 6, this is 1.2.0. So let's add up. This is 2, this is 6, this is 1, this is 0, this is 0, this is 20. So we have 20,016.2 centimeter cube. Please, you can go through this clip again, all right? Until you gain an understanding of the concept. They are very easy, but you may need to practice again. So 20,016. So let's go and look for that in the options given us 20,016.2 centimeter cube. So the correct option is option A. So option A is the option we are searching for. We've come to the end of this video segment, but there are definitely more video clips to come. And we believe this content is very interactive and helpful. All you need to do is to always hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get alert as soon as we upload the next video clips all for you.